Hey guys, it's Bailey Wiki. Okay, I'm going to show you something interesting today. Uh, this is with Mass Edit. So we're going to use a spawner tile just from my library, and we're going to make an island. Uh, remember, it just randomizes the background here. And look, we got lucky with the first roll. So let's make a scene with this. We're going to grab some of the new hut assets that just came out today. And these are facades. They're not real buildings inside. These are just to decorate. And we're going to move them around. And already you might be thinking, hey, aren't these prefabs? Well, they are. Now you might be thinking, well, where are the control tokens? Well, there, there aren't any. Uh, let's grab some trees, just a bunch of trees, and we'll throw them in the middle here. So just some new palm trees. And kind of splay those out. And let's go ahead and put a couple of tiki torches in here. Maybe along the... There's some kind of ceremony going on. And then let's drop a boat in here as well. None of these have control tokens. They're all prefabs. You can move them around by grabbing any piece of them, any tile or, or entity. We're just putting a couple of uh, tokens on this boat. And then we're going to make another prefab out of it. And this one is a boat with a crew. And here we've got our boat with our crew. And then just drag the crew off. There's no opening up of, of menus. There's no uh, messing with control tokens. Just all these things just have links. Here we've got some day and night uh, audio effects that we can use. Just kind of drop them in as presets. So I'm going to show you what's going on here. This is a new functionality within Mass Edit. It's uh, still experimental but it's uh, creating presets and prefabs uh, without any kind of control tokens or with token attached or anything else. So with that, let's jump in and I'll show you how to use it. Okay, so before we jump into making prefabs, these are all the pieces to prefabs. We're going to make these together. Uh, before we do that, I'm just uh, going to show you really quickly the controls. There's no uh, global settings that you really have to worry about, but if you jump into the controls, you can see what the controls are for a lot of what we're going to do today. So Shift Q is super important. It opens up the link menu, right? It opens up this menu here, which we're going to go into in just a second. Uh, shift delete will, if you select any part of a prefab and you hit shift delete, it'll delete the entire thing. If you want to re-engage a prefab, I'll show you an example. You use shift D that will, uh, if you've placed a prefab and you want to replace it, turn it, rotate it, you know, scale it, you press shift D and that will enter preview mode and you can manipulate it like, like you're used to. We also now have uh, mirroring the preview, both horizontally or vertically. This can be valuable if the prefab you made, you want it to be orientated a different way. And then these two are interesting too, because you can copy prefabs. You can hit shift C if you have any of the piece of the prefab copied, and then shift V will pit place it either in this scene or in another scene. It can be handy if you've created a prefab, you haven't saved it to your directory and you just want to go uh, reuse it in another scene. Okay. So reminder that you can create your presets here, different types of presets. I've got I don't know, thousands of them. We're going to create these. We're going to then put them in our directory so we can use them later. Reminder that Mass Edit is free. The assets I'm showing you are part of my Patreon, but the, everything I'm going to show you here, you can do in Mass Edit for free. Okay, so let's look at this link menu. We hit Shift Q and we get Mass Edit Linker, right? And we can resize it. Uh, let me orientate you. If you need some tool tips on how to use it, just click this little question mark here, and then we'll go through these as we create this prefab. The first thing we want to do is just double click in the middle here, and it creates this link. And right now the link is selected. Now it's deselected, right? So let's select our link. And now that opens up the ability to do some things. So if we just uh, have this roof of this, this hut, for example, and we just attach it that way, it'll create a link of, from that tile to uh, this kind of linked entity. This, this represents just like the entire linked entity. Uh, we could also uh, select the tile underneath it. We can do that one at a time. Now here's our link. We have two tiles hanging off of it. You can see it highlighting whatever you're over. Uh, but if we didn't want to go through all that, we could just press this button. This adds everything on every layer to the prefab. So now we've got, let's zoom in here a little bit. Let's make this bigger. We've got various tiles. You can see we have walls that are selected. We even have a couple of lights. That's the entirety of that preset. Let's close this for a second. 
And as we drag this around, we can see that it's all being dragged together, including all the walls, doors, lights, everything else, right? Any entity can be attached, even regions. Okay, so let's hit Shift-Q again. Gives us a nice little schematic of our preset. Now we have a couple of lights and maybe when I place it, I don't want the, and I want to, maybe I want to move the lights around. I don't want the lights to then move the rest of the preset. Well, if we zoom in here and we select our, our preset here, you notice this thing, we can cycle through types of connection nodes. Here, all of the arrows are pointing out. That means that I can manipulate any single thing like this wall and it will not affect the, uh, what it's connected to. I can cycle to the next one and now I can move the wall and it will move the entire linked set, right? So let's go back to none, right? Or so, so both directions and let's change our light. So let me show you what I mean by this. So if I move my light, it moves everything else. If I change it so that the light only receives data changes, do the same thing with this light. Now I can move my light around as much as I want. But if I move my entire preset, the light moves with it. Cool, right? So you can really decide when you're building something what you want to have kind of be a control and what you don't, right? And sometimes when you get a lot of presets on the scene, um, you need to, like, you get a lot of things connected. You may need to zoom in or you may need to just select this and then cycle everything connected to it, depending on what you're trying to accomplish. Notice we can also remove links. If I just tip this light, and I cut and paste it here, it would still leave it connected to that node. But if I have that light selected, I can remove its link. And now this light is on its own. It doesn't, uh, doesn't affect anything else. And then you can also delete from what I've selected, all the linked placeables uh, that are associated with it. Okay, now let's look at this tree. This tree actually has a couple of pieces as well. It's got this uh, tree stump. It's got this shadow that it casts. And it's got the overhead tile for the tree. All right, so let's make a preset out of that. Shift Q, find any blank space here, double click. Got our link set. Now let's connect, connect everything to it. Let's take a look at it and see if it's right. Yep, we've got three tiles. That's exactly what we were looking for. But one of the tiles is the shadow, and I may want to change the orientation of the shadow. So I'm going to make it so the shadow just receives a direction. That way I can move the shadow down when I when I change it around. So let's test our preset. Okay, it's working good. The shadow and everything's moving. Now let's drag, drag the shadow itself, and let's orientate it over in this direction. Perfect, right? If we look at our map while we have nothing selected, we'll see everything on here. Now, let's say we didn't want this preset anymore. Uh, we didn't want the association. Maybe we dropped it into the scene. We don't want it to, to stay as a preset. You actually just right-click that link, and it will delete the preset entirely. Okay, so let's reconstitute our tree. And let's fix the shadow. All right, good. So now our tree's good. Now I'm going to show you how to save these presets. Uh, we just open up our... Mass edit window, wherever we want to save them to. Let's say we're going to save them to our tile uh, presets. Just grab any part of the preset and drag it in. And it's going to say, do you want the link placeables to also be included in the attachment? In this case, we do. Opens up this. We'll, uh, we'll just call it our uh, palm tree demo. And we can uh, make changes as we would with anything else. You can ignore this. This is uh, from another module. And let's just look at its spawning behavior. So we can see the two attachments. Uh, it's going to create new links every time it drops it in. That way the links and the preset itself when it drops into a scene is always going to be unique. You can stop that behavior by toggling this on. Um, I'm not sure why you would do that, but it's here in case you think of a, a reason for it. We'll do the same thing with our building. Yes, we want to attach everything. We'll call this a hut. By the way, well, I'll show you this. You can select both of these, drag them both in. Now we've got both, and we'll call this hut and tree. Let's just see what that looks like. See, there we go. We've got both of them. We can rotate them around. We can resize them. Everything that we can do with mass edit. Cool, right? And just center mouse wheel click uh, 
un, uh, gets out of that mode. We've got the same thing with lighting here. We've got this little tiki torch with a light, a little light attached to it. This tiki torch has some intelligence to it, so you can click on it and it will toggle the light on and off. It's the same general principle, but just to give you one more example, click anywhere here, lasso everything. There we go. Probably want it all to stay together. That works. Our ambient audio, I do a lot of, you know, creating scenes of different types, you know, and I like a, a lake, uh, an ocean side at, a, during the day, an ocean side at night, that sort of thing. So I create them together, right? So this is only active at night. It's got all the settings I need to have the sound be muffled through walls and things like that. And I don't want to keep redoing the thinking. So I just create this template once and then I just make a preset out of it. So we can do the same thing here. Shift Q, double click. Oops, had, every, had everything from the layer. There's our two music notes. And we're going to generally want them to go together, so we'll keep them together like that. You can even save those. Or put them all in the same spot. Oh, I can't. I can't see them. Here we go. We'll call this uh, audio demo. Okay, and we've got that. Now we've got these um, random NPCs. You don't actually, uh, this isn't linking uh, as far as this demo goes, but I'll just show you, uh, we'll look at tokens. So there's a bunch of NPC tokens that I gave out today. Uh, then we can just add them to a brush and it'll randomize these NPC tokens. We want those because we're gonna place those on this boat. So let's say this is the crew to our boat. This boat, as a reminder, is made with a special region. This region uses another mass edit function that makes uh, tokens link. It's a behavior that makes tokens link to that particular region, and then they unlink as soon as you drop them, uh, drag them off. Uh, I did another video last time on uh, mass edit on how to do that. But uh, we want to attach that and everything else to this preset. So let's grab, uh, let's hit Shift Q create a new preset, lasso everything in this region. It should have attached everything. Looks good. We'll test it out by dragging our boat around. Okay. Make sure our lights, everything are with it. Yep, good. Now let's grab our crew. And they have to start off the boat if we drag them on the boat. that region should have linked everybody. Here we go. Now they're all on the boat successfully and rotate it, that sort of thing. And if you didn't notice, all of those tokens created a link to the boat. You can see the kinds of links that they created, right? And they're linking to that region. It's exactly what we want. Now we'll go back in here and we'll drag our boat. Actually, I'm going to drag this image. This is a better image. If you, whatever image you're holding and drag, that will become the thumbnail for the preset. So we'll call this boat demo with crew. And let's test it out. So some things we're going to test is uh, shift to delete. That deletes the entire preset. Drag this back out and we successfully have our crew. And they're still linked in the same way, so you can just drag them off the boat and they're free. They can go roaming around, and as soon as you drag, drag them back on again, they're reconnected to the boat, and you can drag them around your scene. So just to review, Shift-Q opens up your link menu. Uh, another one, if you hold down Alt, you can drag a connected piece temporarily. If you hold down Alt and Shift, you can get the fine tuning of it. But that's in case you have one piece that's connected and you want to move it without moving everything else. Shift D will re-engage your prefab so you can do everything like resizing it and all that stuff. If we do this, Shift Delete, and then we didn't like that, we can actually Control Z it back, just in case you didn't know that. So with that, I'll leave you with some Im images from today's release. As always, uh, we give these tutorials. We also show off the assets that you can get through BaileyWiki. If you want lots of food items and prefabs and thousands of tiles, we've got you covered.
So that's it. So why why do this, right? So just to let you know, I mean, token tax has been out forever. It does a bunch of good error handling and other things that that will we'll eventually be rolling out. But, you know, I, I really wanted to, we do so much with prefabs and presets. I really wanted to create something that we could uh, take under development and continue to develop further. Uh, KLG does an amazing job with token attacher, uh, but there's a lot of things I think that it probably could do that we're interested in seeing uh, do those things because we have so many prefabs. And this is how I like to design my maps. I like to drop things in and, you know, be able to make towns and stuff like that. Uh, really easily. So, you know, that's one of the reasons. Um, I also like just dropping it in and manipulating it. You know, I don't like necessarily, you know, I could still hold alt, but I don't necessarily like, you know, having a menu that I have to open every time. It gets a little bit cumbersome when you're working with things. I also, you know, as much as I like control tokens, and I may still use control tokens for a lot of different things, they tend to clutter the map and then you've got to like delete them afterwards. And this just kind of makes it, I don't know, kind of organic. It just feels... Uh, a little bit easier. Um, I'm able to manipulate the relationships between the different entities uh, really easy because I have that, um, you know, that linker menu. And at the end of the day, this is system agnostic uh, token attacher. When you use those tokens, they tend to be um, system dependent and um, asset is totally system agnostic. So I can create this content. Anyone, even in sci-fi games, any game system can use these things. So uh, that's why we're we're looking at it and, and why I'm so interested in it. But let us know in the comments if you like it, if you found other uses for it. Uh, let us know on Discord if there's any cool stuff that you made or if you have any feature requests. Put those here in the comments as well. We watch those and we definitely act on them. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you have fun making presets using MassEdit. And I hope you have fun making your maps.